Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Easy Max Mobile in the Project Tech Cloud. First, just a couple of items. This webinar is being recorded, and we have muted all phone lines. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit those through the chat bubble on your screen. Today's webinar is being presented by Eric Delaney, who is a senior engineer at Interpro Solutions, and myself, Julie Rampallo, Vice President of Project Tech. The purpose of this webinar is to demonstrate the EasyMax mobile application, as well as the Project Tech and Interpro Solutions partnership, and the reason why we decided to form this partnership. Project Tech is an IBM Gold business partner. We specialize in what we call Maximo as a service. This is a SaaS offering for Maximo, which we've been providing for over 20 years. And actually the year 2020 marks our 30 year milestone of being in business. We are also ISO 27001 certified. We have a dedicated team of information security staff who have worked really hard to achieve this. And if you're not familiar with the certification, it is a framework of policies and procedures around an information security management system. So if you want to learn more about it, you can go out on the internet and learn more about that. But it's very difficult to achieve, and we're very proud of this. Project Tech also has many strategic partnerships with Maximo integrators throughout the world. They're able to bundle our Maximo as a service with their expertise and delivery methodologies for their end clients. So although we do have several direct clients, um, we also have many clients in our cloud that were brought to us via, via partners and um, those partners provide professional services to the end users. Those partners are also able to provide um, and leverage any of the other relationships that Project Tech might have with third party vendors such as Interpro Solutions so they can deliver products like EasyMax Mobile to their end users. As I mentioned, Project Tech provides Maximo as a service, which is a play on SaaS. This is a slide we borrowed from Gartner that shows the application deployment methodologies available to companies running business applications such as Maximo. On the far left side of the slide, you see what we call the traditional on-premises IT methodology, where the client is basically responsible for supporting everything for a business application from the data center to all the infrastructure, to the software, all the way up to the level of the data. If you move over a couple of blocks to hosting, this is a little bit different than SaaS where the service provider is supporting the data center, the network and storage and physical storage, but the client still has to support all the layers above from the virtualization all the way up to the data level. And then we have infrastructure as a service and then platform as a service and then finally, you get to the far right, which is software as a service. This is, the, this is where Project Tech lives, basically. Project Tech provides our Maximo as a service clients with all the management and support of everything you see here except for data. So the only thing our clients have to maintain and worry about is their data. So this slide shows a list of uh, some of the detailed items that are included with Project Tech's Maximum as a Service offering. As I mentioned before, um, we are a SaaS provider, so we support the entire Maximum solution stack. We have a 4.9 service level agreement for availability and uptime of our customers' Maximum systems. We provide level one, level two, and level three support for Maximum customers. We also can provide level one, level two support for some approved third-party applications such as EasyMax Mobile. 24-7 emergency support is included and our technical support staff team are all IBM certified Maximo experts. We support any of these database platforms you see here. Although our go-to is SQL Server, we can do Oracle or DB2. We have several customers on all platforms. And the reason why um, we have different platforms is that Sometimes our customers are running Maximo in-house or with another service provider, and they may be on Oracle or DB2, and they simply want to migrate that over as is into our cloud. And then from there, we take over the care and feeding of their Maximo system. So we're able to support all three. We also have a team of developers who um, provide services for integration development. 
many of our clients, and probably 90%, I would say, have some sort of an integration with our Maximo and our cloud and a third party application, such as a purchasing system. One production and one non production instance is included in the base service. However, more instances are available as needed. Our system is highly available, which is shown through our 49 SLA commitment. We monitor infrastructure, middleware, and Maximo continuously for any issues, and we address those as quickly as possible. We also provide services for backup, restore, and disaster recovery. SQL Server Gateway is a uh, proxy and a proprietary tooling, actually, that we've created so that our customers can connect to their Maximo database through a secure method to, uh, from a third-party application such as Excel or Crystal Reports or some other BI tool that allows the customers to securely connect to Maximo and run reports in maybe an application that they're more familiar with without having to log into the front end of Maximo and use the tools that are there. The license compliance is um, a, a, a big area of um, concern for some customers who carry their own licensing. And so we do have SaaS licensing available to our customers as an option. And for those customers that are using our licensing, um, all the risk is on, on uh, Project Tech as far as, you know, if IBM were to come in and audit and make sure that our customers are in compliance, the onus is on Project Tech. And so we would be the ones actually hit with any fines or um, anything resulting from perhaps the results of a bad audit. I'm happy to say that we went through an audit a couple years ago and we came through swimmingly. And so this is something that we find very important and we stay on top of. And lastly, uh, mobility options are a big thing for customers in our cloud. Most businesses today want to be able or need to be able to be mobile while they're out in the field doing work orders and or inventory and things like that. So that's kind of where this partnership came in with uh, Interpro and their EasyMax mobile application and Project Tech. We had several customers actually that brought us EasyMax Mobile as one of their required um, applications. And so we built this partnership with Interpro, we learned the product, um, and just recently we formed a, a new arrangement with Interpro so that we can um, offer these as a SaaS license option. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Eric at Interpro for a demonstration of EasyMax Mobile. Thank you for the introduction, Julie. My name is Eric Delaney, and I'm a senior software engineer at Interpro Solutions. Before we get into the demo, I want to give you a brief overview of our company, our software, and our services. Interpro Solutions was founded in 2003 and is headquartered just north of Boston. We originally started as Maximo system integrators, focusing on Maximo implementations and upgrades. Around 2009, there was a technology shift towards smartphones and tablets, so we built our own mobile solution for Maximo called EasyMax Mobile. Today, we offer products and services including Maximo Consulting, custom software solutions, and our enterprise mobile app, EasyMax Mobile. Our client base spans across a wide range of industries, including manufacturing, aviation, oil and gas, utilities, higher education, and more. These implementations range from five users to as many as several thousand. Now we'll talk about the benefits of choosing EasyMax Mobile. The technology stack is similar to Maximo, so your current support staff will be able to easily transition to supporting EasyMax Mobile. The design, architecture, and deployment is very similar to Maximo. You can also expect a high user adoption rate due to the intuitive UI and similar design elements as Maximo. Some examples include the Start Center and the Go-To menu, which can also be found in our mobile application. Finally, we'll talk about some of the ways to increase your ROI. The first is that EasyMax Mobile will help to eliminate paper and also increase visibility as the technicians make changes throughout the day to the work order. It will also reduce on administrative costs and increase data integrity because all user inputs will be validated against the fields in Maximo. All of these benefits lead to increased productivity among your workforce. Lastly, 
EasyMax Mobile is supported across multiple platforms, including iOS, Windows, and Android. So you can either select one platform for your entire workforce or have different users utilizing different platforms. Now we'll jump into the demo of EasyMax Mobile. From the home screen of my iPad, I'll select the EasyMax Mobile icon, which will bring us to the login screen. I'll then input my username and password, which is the same credentials as Maxmo, and I'll log in. On the login page, on the right-hand side, you'll see the result sets, which are the buckets of work that the user can select. On the right-hand side, you'll see favorite applications and quick insert, like adding a new work order or new asset. Today, we're gonna jump into the CM and PM work orders assigned to me and see that there are four records there. We're then brought to the list page where we can see the high level information about each work order. We can search through the list and sort the list. Because it's a short list, we'll tap on reported date and bring the most recent work order to the top. And then we'll select on the 10,000 mile PM. Once we've selected the work order, the right hand side will show the attributes and the information about the work order. The left hand side will display the actions that we can take against the record. To start off, we'll start the timer to start tracking our work and create that labor record. When I tap on the start timer button, it's also going to move the status from approved to in progress to indicate that the work has begun. Now you'll see the attachments action here has three in the bubble. So when I select on attachments, we'll see that we already have a bucket truck, a manual and a windshield. And I can navigate into the manual and see that this information was brought over from the asset. And on the bucket truck, it's just a picture of the truck that we're inspecting. To add a new attachment, I can tap the camera icon in the top right corner, default the folder, and then I'm prompted to take a new photo or choose existing. I'll choose existing, and I have a photo of a toy car with some marked up information on here, uh, the windshield circled and the description above. So we'll leave that as is, and then for our attachment, we'll just add in a description of broken windshield. Tap save, and now we'll upload this record into Maximo, and it can be found in the same folder of the attachments in Maximo. So whether it's through Easy Max Mobile or Maximo, all the attachments can be accessed in the same area. We'll tap the back button to return to the work order, and now we'll jump into our next action which is the tasks. On this task screen, you'll notice that the statuses are in progress and there's a checkbox to the right hand side of each task. As I tap on the checkbox, we're moving each record to a completed status. And we're also having the row be highlighted in gray to indicate that the task has been completed. And once we're done moving through all the tasks, we tap the back button and return to the main work order. Next, we'll go into the meter readings, and you'll see that there are three readings or, or three meters associated with this work order. So the first two will be delta readings. So we'll input 500 here for the fuel consumption, and 700 for the odometer. And finally, the oil color is characteristic. So the blue lookup arrow indicates that there's a selection list to choose from, and we'll mark this as clear. Finally, in the top right, we tap save, and now all three of those meter readings have been submitted to Maximo. We then tap the back button and return to the record. The next action we'll take is adding material to the work order. So when I click on materials, we'll be brought to the list of materials on the record. And then when I tap the plus button, you will see all of the fields that need to be filled out. We'll first populate the storeroom by using the lookup arrow and then tapping central. And next, on the item lookup, there's a barcode scanning icon. So we can tap on the barcode scanning icon, pass in a QR code, and then it will auto-populate all of that information for us. And we can leave the quantity at 1, or increase it to 3, and then tap Save. And now we've recorded that material against the work order. Finally, we'll upload a work log. So when I tap on the work log action, and tap the plus button, we'll type in description of work and issue found. 
and then we'll tap on the microphone next to the space bar for dictation. The work was completed as detailed, but there was vibration in the engine. And now we tap the save. And we now have an additional record for the supervisor to review when they're completing and closing out that work. And the final two steps for the technician are to tap on stop timer to finish that labor record. And now you'll see the one in the bubble here with the start and end time. And then finally, we tap on work done. Are you sure it has been completed? Yes. And now the status is moved to technician complete. From here, we navigate back to the start center and then we jump into our inspection. You'll see the second bucket here says my inspections with a 17 count in the bubble. So we'll tap on that result set. I'll sort the list by reported date and we'll jump into this first option here. Now on the left hand side you'll notice that there's an action called inspection with a one count in the bubble. So I'll select on inspection and we'll see here that there's an inspection associated with this work order. Now this page will show multiple inspections if the inspection is associated at the task level as well as at the header work order level. And on the top right hand side here, we'll see that the current status is pending. So when I tap on this record, it will prompt me to start the inspection. Once the inspection is started, we're brought to the input page. So on the right hand side here, you'll see the questions as well as the question groupings like ex exterior inspection and interior inspection. On the left hand side, you'll see actions that let you quickly jump into certain sections. So when I tap on the interior inspection, I jump right down into that question grouping. And finally, there's some additional information about the form. So when we tap on vehicle inspection, we can expand for the location, the asset, and any instructions associated with this form. Now I'll start walking through the questions and fill out my answers. So for the exterior inspection grouping, we'll do the body condition is excellent. And as soon as I select an option, you'll see the save button in the top right corner is highlighted in red because there's a pending change to be submitted to the server. On the second question, I'll do excellent for the windshield. And then for the wiper, I'll tap on pour. And as soon as I tap on pour, I trigger the conditional uh, question that we have below it to replace the wipers. So on this form, we can associate certain values input by the user with follow-up questions based on that input. If I were to switch this wiper condition to excellent, you'll see that sub question is no longer available. So we'll select poor, and then we'll select no for replacing the wipers. For the interior, I'll select excellent as the seatbelt condition, and then excellent as the seat condition. And now we're into the meter section. So if there are meters associated with the asset or location, you can input those values directly from this form. We can also expand the meter history to see all previous values associated with this form. So for fuel consumption in gallons, we'll type 100. And for odometer in miles, we'll type 500. And this will now be added on to the history that's already available. And for our last meter, it's a characteristic reading for the oil color. And we'll select clear. So we filled out most of the required questions, which you can see at the top, 8 out of 11 total and 8 out of 9 required. So the last one here is in this general question grouping for how many months since the last oil change. And we'll put one here. So now that all of the nine out of nine required are filled out, we can save this form. And in the top left corner, there's a green checkbox indicating that it can be completed. But before we complete it, I'll add my signature. So I'll tap on add signature, sign there. And if I jump back down, you'll see a thumbnail of the signature that that user submitted and we can have multiple signatures associated with a given form. So the status is still in progress, so I can make any changes to the questions and the answers that I submitted. But if I'm ready to complete it, I tap the checkbox in the top left corner. It's now completed. And some new actions pop up beneath the question groupings. So I can tap on create a work order. 
And now, based on any failed answers that I gave, like for instance, I did not replace the wiper after reporting the condition is poor, I can tap on that response, tap the save button, and it's going to generate a follow-up work order based on that deficiency that I reported. And now that I created a follow-up, I can tap on inspection follow-up, and we can see that work order 4559 was created based on the wiper condition. Once we're done reviewing the form, we can tap the go to and jump right back to the start center. And now I'll turn it back over to Julie for some questions. Thanks, Eric, for that great demonstration of EasyMax Mobile. We had a handful of questions come in. One was about um, licensing of EasyMax Mobile in Projectex Cloud. What are the options? I mentioned earlier in the webinar that we have an agreement now with Interpro that allows Projectex to offer the EasyMax licenses to our customers in a SaaS model, which means they don't have to buy software. It's just bundled in with their services. We call that the, the true SaaS model. We also can do bring your own license model, which is where the customer owns the EasyMax licenses already, or perhaps they would prefer to purchase them and own them themselves. So either way, the services are the same. It's just the license models are different. Um, another question came in about if we want to start using EasyMax Mobile, who will help us implement the application? Is that Project Tech or is that Interpro? Um, so Interpro are the EasyMax experts. So you would engage with them either directly or if you need to kind of source it through a Project Tech contract, you can do that as well. But Interpro are going to be uh, the resources that will be helping you get your EasyMax Mobile up and running to your requirements. Once you go live and everything's stable, then the support piece is then handed over to Project Tech for L1 and possibly L2. And then if we need to engage Interpro at any point because we are stumped or we just don't have that expertise in the product, then we certainly have the direct par partnership to do so. Here's another question. I noticed EasyMax Mobile has some mapping functionality. Can you explain what your mapping system does? Uh, great question. We weren't able to get into the mapping due to timing today, but yes, we have both basic and advanced mapping capabilities. We integrate with Esri's ArcGIS system, allowing you to view custom maps, feature layers, and data. There's a lot you can do on the maps, like dropping pins, viewing work order data, and seeing a live view of where your technicians are. We'll be releasing more information about mapping in the coming months, so stay tuned for that. Here's another question. Related to mobile device management, my organization is currently using a mobile device management system. Does EasyMax Mobile work with these systems? Uh, yes, EasyMax Mobile does work with a number of mobile device management systems. We currently offer separate versions of our application in the App Store, uh, and we support Citrix Zen Mobile and Mobile Iron. Uh, but if you have any other solutions, just let us know and we can work with you to wrap our app so that it works with your MDM solution. Thanks, Eric. Well, that's it for our time. Um, as I mentioned, we will follow up individually for those that submitted questions that did not get answered. Also, a recording of this webinar will be sent out before the end of the week. If you have any other questions or want uh, more information about our solution, uh, Maximum as a Service or EasyMax Mobile, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for your time and have a great day.